G'day, Aussie fun style bloke, here you go. Well, right now we're going to work on this wisteria tree. Um, this thing puts out massive amounts of flowers. Really cool tree. It did, this here was originally from the neighbor's house, um, back at the old house. And they didn't want it anymore because it had grown up the patio and was struggling out the patio. So they wanted some more sunlight in, so they wanted me to chop it out, so I chopped it out. It started off as a trunk, this whole size was pure alive, but when it got repotted into this pot, or originally into a bigger pot, a lot of the trunk died and rotted out really quick, super quick. I think Bougainville is the same. Um, and this trunk here completely died on this side. When I say trunk, I mean, it was all one big trunk, but this side of the trunk completely died. Um, we ended up with some live bits of wood and roots coming up the sides of these two main ones here. And in the middle is also dead, I believe, but it might not be, it might actually cross over. I'm not sure. I think it does, which is why we haven't ended up with this whole bit rotten out here. I think this root here actually crosses over into this main one, so that's cool. So that means that that should never separate as one piece, as long as it's still alive. But we do have the issue here with these two bits. Now, I don't know. Also, it's getting late in the afternoon, so having a beer. Mm. Have some fun with a tongue. Um, I don't know what to do. I can try to treat these bits of wood, but they're that rotten already that I don't like their chances. Um, I've peeled back some of the wood here, some of the really soft stuff that's pretty well off. Um, try and get rid of some of the dirt out of there so that we can treat it. Now, there's a couple of ways of treating it. I did used to recommend Ells Wood Hardener. I'll go and get that and show you. Okay, guys, so that's Lil's wood hardener turns it into a basically it's for rotted timber and it turns it basically into a plasticized bit of wood um, tempting to try that as well um, I think I've got some spray I'll just have a look okay guys I couldn't find the spray I'll give you guys a spin of the tree at the moment, how, how it stands now. Let's give it a bit of a spin. So that's the front with a big hollow. You can see that back branch bit that died. But this part of the tree is actually really cool with a lot of taper. And even from the back with all that hollow it looks super cool. Um, I'm just debating on whether it will still look good without these bits. Yes. Well, they're gone. It's really strange because the roots are still alive and connected, but there's no shoots. Anyway, so I'll leave that stump there and let it rot away naturally. But there is bits of it that are still alive for some reason. Right, so we've decided that's going to be a hollowed out tree. What do you reckon? Still looks pretty friggin' cool. I'll put a light on it. Look at that. I'll give it a spin with the light. Maybe rip out a bit here. Give it a bit more division down to there. You can see how soft it gets. It gets so, so soft. Um, 
really soft but let's just see, if, see how we go trying to treat this wood so originally like I say it was wood hardener was a go but um, Harry Harrington that does a lot of carving mind you you have fun with a ton ah. Harry Harrington, he does a lot of carving. Super good carver. His bonsai is bloody awesome. So if you want to check him out, go and check him out on YouTube. Harry Harrington. And he recommends just using super glue to plasticize the wood. So I bought all this cheap super glue. It was 98 cents per pack of two. And I'm going to try that. And apparently if you keep applying this, it um, soaks in and it's pretty well plasticizes the wood as well. But what I will do is get something as a chop to put it on a bit of an angle backwards so that Bit, way bigger chop, way bigger chop. Get something else. Yeah, okay, so we've got the chop down there. So the idea will be now that we can um, apply the super glue, hopefully, to the wood. So I guess you just pour it on everywhere where you can get to the wood. And you just pour a heap of super glue on. One tube's going further than I thought it would. As you can see, I got a lot of packs of it. Um, one one tube has done a bit. I don't want to get it all over my hands, but I'll do a close up. Okay, so there you can see bits of wood. Now let's get a super glue tube ready. Do it up, take it off. Right. You can see it all running down there. And I'll probably just reapply this for a while until. Hopefully the whole lot is soaked in super glue. And hopefully this treats the wood well enough that it doesn't rot. I know it's a pretty hard ask to stop wisteria wood from rotting. As you can see, and as I've told you, that rotted out in only about four years to that extent. So you can imagine it's gonna be pretty hard Let's get some more out. Super, super cheap, super glue. But I don't think the quality of the super glue would be the biggest thing here because, you know, all super glue uses the same principle. So put some more up the top here. And I might even reapply this during the winter. To really plasticize and firm up all this wood because I don't want any more of it to decay it's got to a point where it looks pretty cool and I don't want it to go any further back I'm pretty happy with how it is now damn I lost the lid here let's get another one out Glue it around in there. 
be careful when it hits the soil as far as try not to let too much get down to soil level. I might actually get them all ready, get them all out, get them all ready, and then we can just squirt away. Okay, guys, got them ready. Just got to screw the tops down and they're all ready to go. So, let's get into the super glue. Um, I might not need all these, so I'll see how it go, but. Just gonna keep squirting away. Try not to get too much in the actual soil. Don't believe it would actually hurt. Oh, I just got all over my hand. I didn't want that, damn it. Now it's gonna stick my hands together. You idiot, Sam, you idiot. Now my hands stick into the glue tube. Ah, oh, God, damn it. Oh. Oh, stuck. Your hands stuck together. Glue stuck oh, to my hand. Just what I didn't bloody want. Damn it. I wanted to be able to just carefully screw them on like that and just casually squirt away without getting it all over me, but nah. Typical me, I can't keep things clean and neat and tidy. And that's what we end up with. Keep squirting away. So this is Harry Harrington's method, not my method, and we'll see how it goes. I can't see how it can be a problem. Just keep getting more out, squirting away. Yep, I'm, a, I'm assuming this will work fine, this method, and... That dude knows what he's talking about, Harry Harrington, so I'm sure his method will be fine, as he knows what he's talking about. As you can see, it looks like it's going to leave a bit of a glossy finish to it, but that's okay. Um, you know, it is what it is. Just try not to let too much fall off the end and into the soil. So a lot of dead wood to treat here, so we're going through a lot of tubes. And I may reapply another month or two later. But for now, let's just use up all these glues and see how we go. Man, my fingers are just stuck up now. Hopeless, any hope. Reckon we're pretty well done. It's actually stinging my eyes. You know the fumes that come off this super glue Just in the air everywhere here It's all I can smell Pretty cool, so 
let's see how that method goes. That's that. Fentra sake. Let's pour some of this Ellis wood hardener in this old stump here and see what happens. Okay, now we'll check which one's better. So that's got a lot of Ellis wood hardener. The rest is all super glue. Trimming, well, I suppose we could do our trimming now. Let's put it out. our winter prune not much to do because I do summer prunes on um, a lot of my trees now while they're still growing and then the new growth towards the end of summer is a weak shoot which means when you come to winter you don't have to do big hard cutbacks in winter because I'm starting to get to the opinion where big hard cutbacks in winter are actually bad for a tree you can do your hard cutbacks in summer and then hopefully if everything's right you can do minor cutbacks in winter just to reduce things a bit so you get that last little bit and it also gives you that last bit of ramification in summer you cut it back fairly late summer then in autumn it sort of reshoots but gives you this really weak small growth like we got here and I don't know, I just feel like it um, gives you a small ramification that you can keep and it means that you don't have to do hard cutbacks come winter time. Because I feel like if you do hard cutbacks in winter on deciduous trees, it's just my feeling, but I feel like they can't repair themselves because they're not actively growing. And then you can get some serious die back on trees if you do hard cutbacks um, come winter time so I try to avoid it just something that I've come to the conclusion of whether you agree or not it's up to you personal choice but like I say I'm starting to think hard winter pruning is not a good idea okay so that will be the front somewhere there it may change now because that other stump's gone so instead of it being there, it could be further around there, something like that. Um, I'll give you a spin anyway, I'll hold the light for you. Bring you in close, and closer. I'll give you a spin on Adrian Eggleton's turntable. Hopefully, the deadwood. Bring in on a close up of the deadwood. Hopefully, the deadwood holds now. You can see it's sort of shiny. It's got the glue all over it, it's still setting. Be soaking in and setting at the same time. And hopefully she works out. But yeah, that's a super, super cool tree. Cheers for watching. Aussie Bonsai Bloke, please like, share, subscribe, tell your mates about the channel. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.